Hello everybody. Glad to see you. Today we keep talking about total run out. As we can see at top left, we are going to implement total run out for mention surfaces. Here I would like to highlight the direction of dial gauge. It should be perpendicular to the mention surface while the component is going to rotate around datum axis. At top right, I would like to highlight whenever we are going to implement total run out for flat surface, we are going to control perpendicularity for that flat surface as it is highlighted here. We are going to control the, perp the perpendicularity of that flat surface respect to datum axis. At bottom, we are going to implement total run out Tz is 0 0.2 back to A. A is axis of this cylinder. It means whenever we are going to rotate the component, the dial gauge should be perpendicular to that conical surface. It means we are going to have two coaxial conical surfaces, and this surface should be between those two coaxial conical surfaces. Here, we are going to use this basic dimension. It means we are going to control location, orientation, and form of this conical surface. In this slide, we are going to compare total run out and run out. We can see this total run out is going to implement for this flat surface, Tz is 0 0.1 back to A. It means we are going to control the perpendicularity of this flat surface respect to datum axis. A here. But whenever we are going to implement run out for this flat surface, it means we are going to control each cross section individually. As we can see here at bottom, we are not going to control the whole surface. It means we are going to control each cross section individually. In this slide, I would like to show this fixture. We are going to implement this total run out TZ is 0 0.75 back to A. Whenever this component is going to rotate around datum axis A, this dial gauge should be perpendicular to that conical surface to measure total run out for this surface. At bottom, we are going to implement total run out for this flat surface. Just for this area, it is highlighted by dashed line. It means dial gauge should move in this area of this flat surface, as it is highlighted here in this figure, for this area, while the component is going to rotate around datum axis A. And dial gauge is perpendicular to that flat surface. Here, in this slide, we are going to compare total run out, run out, and concentricity and positioning. As you can see, the size of this component is 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.01. It means the size should be in this interval 0 0.49, 0 0.5, 0 0.51. At the beginning, we are going to have this total run out. Tz is 0 0.003 back to n. It means we are going to have two coaxial cylinders, and this surface should be between those two coaxial cylinders. The Tz is 0 0.003. We are going to control form, orientation, and location. As it is highlighted, whenever we are going to implement run out, it means for each cross section individually, we are going to control form and location. We are not going to control, let's say, orientation. We are not going to control the flatness or let's say form of whole surfaces. Just for individual cross section, we are going to control form and location because we are going to have two coaxial circles whenever we are going to have this run out. And 
concentric city, number three. It means we are going to control the location and mass distribution. We are going to find the location of median points and those median points should be in that 3D cylinder as it is highlighted in this figure. We are going to control the mass distribution. And positioning, number four and five. We are going to control the location and let's say somehow orientation, but not that much. We are going to have this cylinder and we are going to see the position of that. Number four, we don't have any MMC. The TZ is constant. For different diameter of this cylinder, we are going to have the same TZ. It is 0 0.003. But whenever we are going to have modifier here, we are going to have dynamic TZ. For different diameter of this cylinder, we are going to have different value of TZ. For MMC, maximum material exists on this cylinder. For this situation, whenever we are going to have this diameter, the biggest diameter here, we are going to have this TZ 0 0.003, but for other diameter, we are going to calculate what should be the TZ. That's why we are going to have dynamic TZ. And here we have modifier for N. N is here. It means we are going to have shift because whenever we are going to have modifier, here we have MMC. This MMC, it means we are going to consider when we have this maximum material exists for this axis N, whenever we are going to have this maximum diameter here, we are going to have that condition. For other diameter, it means we are going to have a shift of that TZ. We are going to have the shift of that TZ. For now, I would like to close this session. In coming session, again, we are going to continue talking about total runout. Thank you for today. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.